Welcome to Let's Drive With That. I'm Jill. So what we're gonna do today is pursue the never ending saga of trying to figure out ways to sharpen our drill bits. Specifically, I'm going to build a jig to sharpen my drill bits. I've been sharpening my own drill bits, but the results have been so-so. Uh, let's face it, uh, when you do it by hand, it's always a bit of a crapshoot. Yes, you can make one of these uh, and then you can measure where the point is. Oh. The fact remains that it's still not all that precise. Now, I'm not shooting for, you know, getting it within one thousandth of an inch, but it'd be nice to get it somewhat precise so that my drills function really, really well. And uh, because I use them extensively, right. without having them perfectly centered, it's eh, not going to work out all that great. So that's a problem. So what I'm going to do today is take you on this journey on how I'm going to build my drill sharpening jig. So here I am at the bench grinder and um, we need to identify the various characteristics and methods that are usually required in order to achieve good results. This is a drill bit that is at 118 degrees. So to do that, you know, you need this to be this angle to be 59 degrees, of course, because that's the, this edge needs to be flat at the center of the grinding wheel in order to get the correct results. And both edges that are called primaries, this here is called the primary and the rounded part is called the secondary or a relief. Now, when you want to sharpen your drill bits, you want to sh sharpen them so number one, that you get the correct angle, that's one. You want to make sure that you sharpen both sides the same amount, right? So once you're done sharpening this one, you want to turn it over and you want to sharpen this side and you want it to achieve the same length on the primary the cutting edge to be able to gauge the distance that we're grinding into this drill bit. So I'm gonna need some sort of system at the back. And the other thing that we need to do as well, because once you say, okay, I'm gonna grind say five thousandths off, well, you're gonna start over here on the left, you're gonna to wanna to come across and grind away until you've achieved the results. So the mechanism, the jig, is gonna need to slide along on this platform. And let's look at what we might need. One of the easiest ways of holding something round is putting it into some sort of V groove. So some angle iron is the perfect material to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't need anything big. Most of my drill bits are one inch or less in diameter. And I'm not going to grind anything that is smaller than one quarter of an inch. It's, it's a complete waste of time and never get real great result. I consider them consumables and I simply replace them when they break. Okay, so. We've determined all the characteristics that we need to account for and uh, the things that our jig needs to incorporate. So let's go to the bench and let's design something. All right, so before we get moving any further, need we need to identify certain parameters that we need to account for. One, I'm not going to sharpen anything that's smaller than a quarter inch. And the larger size is gonna be about one inch. So what's the length of the one inch drill bits? So we're lock, looking at approximately six inches, six inches or so, right? The quarter inch drill bits are about four inches in length. Okay, so that means 
that I, my piece of angle iron needs to accommodate the longer drill bit and to allocate enough room back here for this dial to plunge in and indicate against the drill bit. Yet, it needs to be long enough in order to lean against the shorter drill bits. And this is the mark where the end of my little table is. And back here, I need to have some sort of nut that will hold the bolt and hold it steady enough so that as it plunges in and comes up to here, it will not, you know, flip flop up and down. Uh, let's go and cut this stuff off. As you can see, I've cut the angles appropriate to make the, the brackets that will grab underneath that little table. And uh, I was tired of holding this thing and flopping around, so I just welded a couple of angle iron um, wings, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term. And so, uh, as you can see here, I marked the 60 degree mark um, so that I could put this in the correct angle. And so my next task is going to be uh, making a couple of little plates, metal plates. I'm going to weld one here, one on the other side, and then I'm going to, once I have that done, I'll uh, mark another one that's horizontal uh, so that it'll form the L or the actual sliding bracket. And so now that this is nice and secure, I can uh, put a couple of tacks of weld and then uh, get going from that point. Okay, so as you can see, I've made a few modifications to this thing. I, uh, like you saw me last time, I was uh, welding these parts here, this and that. But unfortunately, what was happening is that this thing would pivot. So it wasn't holding on to the table correctly. I thought, I don't want to start from scratch. There's got to be a better way to do that. So what I did is I extended these lips or retainers, shall we call them, fences, and that fixed the problem. <laughs> so what you got to make is a Z. Okay, in Canada, it's a Z. So for all my friends in the U.S., I'll call it a Z. It's a Z. <laughs> anyway, it fixes the problem. All right, moving on. So I'm gonna cut this up and then we'll carry on. So now that there's uh, only a couple of steps left, so I'm gonna use a uh, piece of 1018 round stock. This is cold pressed, so it welds really well. So I'm going to take that to the lathe, turn that down just to give it a little shine. I'm going to tap the hole for this all thread and that's what I'm going to use. So uh, let's do that. And so you know uh, this is 3 8 by 16 TPI. done now let's do some tapping
And that's it. Okay, so I've got that specialty nut done. And now I'm back at the bench just to look at this thing here. So that's a, a quarter inch drill, which is four inches long. So from here to the end, you know, about four inches, should probably give myself an extra inch just in case. I'll take this, all thread, sorry, and cut it at five inches. Then I'm gonna need some sort of knurled type of knob here and something that will attach to the end of this uh, bolt um, in order to push against whatever drill is gonna be there. Okay, time to face this piece of brass. So I've got a cutoff tool in here and what I want to do is I'm going to use this as the part that we'll see. So I'm going to bring in my cutting tool to do a kind of like a shoulder, bring it out a little bit and that'll make the knob even a little bit bigger which is desirable because I want to drill into it and tap it. So that's what I'm going to do. The uh, shoulder is going to be about a quarter of an inch. Okay, we've got our bolt, we've got our special nut, and we've got a knob. That's lovely. But as you can see here, this bolt doesn't actually touch the bottom. And if we put a small drill bit, it's not going to make contact. So we need to have some sort of tip. tip shall we call it and uh, I've put everything I've cleaned everything in acetone so just going to use some blue Loctite don't want to go insane here and I'm just going to glue this tip and make it flush 
sure. I'm going to use a little square, a rule, and it looks good. All right. Now, the next part that I want to do here is the vertical hold down bracket. And I haven't designed that yet. Uh, so I guess that's what's next. Okay, in the last clip I said the next thing I had to do was create some sort of clamp in order to press down on the drill bit. Well, I kind of thought it over and changed my mind. And it's good to change your mind because, uh, hey, let's face it, nobody's got monopoly on brains, right? And uh, my ideas sometimes suck too. So. Um, what I decided to do is, uh, before I built this clamp system, um, I wanted to try and sharpen, sharpen some drill bits. So I did. And guess what? Turned out awesome. And, um, the beauty is, I guess, by not having a clamp, is that I can see what I'm doing with the drill bit. And I can make minute adjustments and... And honestly, it doesn't require any great amount of force to hold it down. Uh, you know, even as you travel across the the uh, bench grinder plate and whatnot, uh, that was really not an issue. So then came a uh, time, once I, I was satisfied that I was getting a good grind on these drills, um, I took one, specifically a quarter inch, and decided to experiment with the cutting angle at which I would make the primary edge. And I uh, started at five degrees. Actually, I started at zero degrees because it was like level with the center of the bench grinder. And that wasn't working out so great. Then I uh, put a, uh, an angle block got everything uh, leveled, and with a five degree angle, I was getting some pretty good cuts. Then I thought, hey, what the heck, I'm gonna try seven degrees. So I added another two degrees, and wow, the, uh, the cutting power of the drill bit was really at, a, at its best. So that's how I've set my bench grinder uh, plate at the moment. So I'm gonna take this apparatus over to the bench grinder, I'm gonna grind, uh, well, this, this drill bit, which is extremely dull. And uh, actually I'm gonna show it to you on uh, under uh, a really good magnifying glass. And then um, we'll go back, we'll sharpen it, and then we'll come back and have a look at it again. Now for the record, this is a quarter inch drill bit. And I'm having to use it <laughs> to put it under a, a really nice my uh, magnifying glass just to look at it. So imagine like having a sharpened smaller one. It, it really, it's not feasible. So um, if you look here, clearly there's some damage to the cutting edges. It's, it's just not looking good. And the corner is taken off of here. So let's go fix that. And then we'll come back here and have a look. And then we'll take it to the drill press and try some steel cutting. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how this bracket actually easily mounts on the, uh, on the table. Okay. So it's not rocket science. Just put everything level and bam, it just slides on. Really nice. Stays level. There's no no great amount of slop or anything up and down no problem you know it's not a big deal so let's uh let me show you quickly how i ended up setting this up first so what i did is i took this little level and took the edge of this thing and made it centered with the uh the shaft or the spindle of my grinder and level that. Then I wanted to have the seven degree angle as I mentioned. Uh, 
And so I put a couple of these angle um, angle blocks with a little level and made sure that came out to level. So now my drill bit is angled correctly here at 7 degrees and then at 59 degrees this way. So that next part is going to be a little bit uh, loud. Hopefully you can see the whole table, yes. Okay, so first thing I do is withdraw this until the bit fits in and does not quite touch the, the grinder wheel. Now this is uh, silicone carbide. So right now the uh, cutting edge is level, okay, horizontal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the grinder and then bring this until it touches the grinding wheel. All right, so there, here we go. And then, oh, by the way, once, once I've got it touching, I'm going to come back, give it a little bit more distance, and then come across. And then flip it, do the same thing on the other side. Okay, touching. First grind. Flip it. About level. I'm just eyeballing it, but it works really well. Okay, that corner is not fixed yet, so I'm gonna go in a little bit deeper. That's the bad side here, so we're gonna have to get it through this a few more times. both sides every time at the specific depth. Still got a ways to go. I'm going to go in a little bit more. I'm gonna have a quick look. Nice corners. Okay, so now I'm gonna do secondary relief. You can see I'm putting quite a bit of an angle on here. Still making sure the uh, cutting edge is horizontal. Even you're ready to roll. So that looks pretty good. We'll go back to uh, the bench and have a peek. Back at the uh, magnifying glass, and as you can tell, the uh, corner angle is nice and crisp. The primary angle and that little V groove at the top. Are really nice and well centered. That secondary or relief angle, the part that's rounded off from this edge down, that's how you get that. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, get a little closer. There you go. So that's a nice sharp edge. So, next thing to do is go into the drill press and demonstrate to you. 
how well this thing is going to perform. And just to make it a fair test, I am going to put uh, some cutting oil. I always use cutting oil. And I've got my drill pressed to the lowest speed possible on this little thing. So we're going to try a test without a pilot hole and see how that works. And then we're going to move to an existing hole and uh, drill that. Let's go. It's biting in. I'm not applying an extreme amount of pressure, good chips. Wow, <laughs> that's just phenomenal. Okay, so here are the chips being made by this thing. Hopefully you can see this. And uh, so I'm very satisfied with that. The hole is nice and clean. That is coal roll steel and it is uh, just a little over a quarter of an inch in depth. So let's go to an existing hole as if we were normally drill, you know, because you, you go like three drill bits uh, from the previous one kind of thing. There you go. Just like a nice hot knife and butter. So that proves to me it uh, works very well. So I've done previous tests clearly, you know, I want to see if it worked and this is to show you that it actually works. So in summary, this was a, <laughs> a worthwhile little project. I mean, I, I'm not sure about you, but I use my drill bits a lot and uh, quite often have to resharpen them. So being able to do it correctly is really worthwhile. Now, uh, you don't have to have a brass knurled knob or any of that stuff, but clearly you need to have something that slides back and forth, you know, and that is at the correct angle, 59 to 60 degrees. It should be 59, but I did 60, that's fine. And uh, the most important part of this system, other than the other angles and whatnot, is being able to hold the bit at a specific depth so that both sides are equally ground right or sharpened and the other thing is of course like as i showed you we've got a seven degree uh, angle here in order to get a nice cutting edge on the drill bits so and that you know that comes down to you setting that up on your little bench so this little table here is about uh, six inches by six inches square. It, it is square and uh, it makes things a whole lot easier when uh, you're trying to make things that slide. So I hope you enjoyed this little episode. If you like what you see on my channel, please like and subscribe. Hey, you can ring the bell if you want to. And... Uh, Please leave me a comment or a question or maybe answers to my questions. So, thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.